So the MH6, also known as the Little Bird, was originally designed as a scout or reconnaissance helicopter, and the story of how that specific helicopter got picked is crazy. In 1960, the Army issued Technical Specification 153, and it was for what they call an LOH, or a Light Observation Helicopter, and they needed it to be capable of doing various things, and specifically they had four roles that it needed to fill. Number one was the capability to move people around or personnel transport. Number two was escort and attack missions. Number three was casualty evacuation. And number four was observation. So with those parameters established, the army started accepting bids. 12 different companies took part in the competition. So I knew Hughes made this helicopter, but I didn't know the backstory of the Hughes company. So here is that story real quick. The Hughes aircraft company was a major American aerospace and defense contractor. It was founded in 1930 32 by Howard Hughes in Glendale, California, and it was a division of the Hughes Tool Company. The company operated from 1932 to 1997, and at its peak, it had 84,000 employees. Eventually, it was sold to Raytheon in 1997 for $9.5 billion dollars turning Raytheon into one of the world's largest military contractors. All right, back to the design competition. The aircraft were tested for all kinds of different various capabilities. And in the end, the two designs by Fairchild Hiller and Bell were selected as finalists. After those two were selected as finalists, the US Army actually went back and included Hughes in the finalist selection as well. So there were three helicopters in the end. Five prototypes were built and they were fitted with the Allison T63 Alpha 5A engine. And the helicopters were delivered to the US Army in Fort Rucker, Alabama, where the competition was to take place. The Bell YOH-4 was eliminated as it was considered to be underpowered Howard. Eventually, the competition whittled down to the Fairchild Hiller helicopter and the Hughes helicopter. Hughes won the competition and the Army awarded them a contract to start production in 1965. With an initial order of 714 units that was later increased to 1,300 with an option of another 114. Hughes' price for the aircraft was $19,860 just for the airframe without the engine while Hiller's price was $29,415 per airframe without the engine. Howard Hughes is reported to have told Jack Reel, who was an aerospace pioneer and a Howard Hughes confidant, that he lost over $100 million in the building of those 1,300 airframes. It was reported that Howard Hughes had directed his company to submit a bid at a price below the actual production cost of the helicopter in order to secure this order, resulting in substantial losses on the deal, with anticipation that an extended production cycle would eventually prove financial viable. In 1968, Hughes submitted a bid to build an additional 2,700 helicopters. But now, let's actually talk about the specifications of the helicopter itself. So the helicopter sits two crew, it has the capacity of six passengers, it is 32 feet long, including the rotors, it is 4 foot 7 inches wide, it is 8 feet 9 inches tall, it has an empty weight of 1,591 pounds, its max takeoff weight is 3 3,100 pounds. It can carry 62 gallons of fuel. It is powered by one Allison T63 Alpha 5A engine producing 425 horsepower for takeoff or 375 for maximum continuous power. Its maximum speed is 152 knots or 175 miles per hour, but it cruises at about 35 knots or 155 miles per hour. It has a range of approximately 232 nautical miles and it has a service ceiling of about 18,700 feet. Now the MH6 is outfitted with the benches on the sides for troop deployment. There is also a gunship variant called the AH-6. Obviously this is an incredible helicopter and it's got the capability to rapidly deploy troops into very small confined areas unlike its older bigger better brother the UH-60 Blackhawk which just cannot get into some of those tighter spaces 
that the little bird can. So let's talk about some of the military applications and roles that this helicopter provided. After the April 1980 failure of Operation Eagle Claw, it was determined that the US Army lacked the aircraft and the crew that was capable of doing special operations missions. So you ask me, hey Devin, what happened in Operation Eagle Claw? Operation Eagle Claw was a United States Armed Forces operation ordered by President Jimmy Carter to attempt to rescue 52 embassy staff held captive at the Embassy of the United States, Tehran, on April 24th, 1980. The operation, which was one of Delta Force's first operations, encountered many obstacles and failures and was subsequently aborted. Eight helicopters were sent to the first staging area called Desert One, but only five arrived in operational condition. One had encountered a hydraulic problem, another was caught in a sandstorm, and the third showed signs of a cracked rotor blade. During the operational planning, it was decided that the mission would be aborted if fewer than six helicopters remained operational, despite only four being absolutely necessary. In a move that is still discussed in many military circles, the field commanders advised President Carter to abort the mission, which he did. As the US forces prepared to withdraw from Desert One, one of the remaining helicopters crashed into a transport aircraft that contained both servicemen and jet fuel. The resulting fire destroyed both aircraft and killed eight servicemen. To remedy this shortcoming, the US Army began developing a special aviation task force to prepare for the next attempt to rescue the hostages eventually birthing the United States Army 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, also known as the Night Stalkers, who had extensive night flight training capabilities and typically flew at night. So Operation Eagle Claw was a total failure and the US Army decided that they needed to have a special air wing that was capable of flying at night and deploying troops in really precise locations that specialized in this. And I really recommend that you just give a quick Google search to the Night Stalkers and their story of being founded. It is crazy. What they do is they insert troops and they have very advanced night flying capabilities. This leads us into Operation Urgent Fury in Granada. The MH6s of the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment saw overt combat combat action for the first time in Granada during Operation Urgent Fury on October 25th, 1953. On D-Day, six MH-60s and two AH-60s were flown to the Eastern Caribbean island from Pope Air Force Base in North Carolina in the bellies of four Air Force C-130s. They put the helicopters in the middle of a plane and flew them. In addition to the helicopter air crews, the aircraft also carried a company of US Army Rangers and a Delta Force Squadron, units that were also part of an American assault force. By the time these planes got to the island, other planes that had departed earlier had already deployed Rangers who were parachuting out of the planes and landed on the newly finished runway. When these airdropped rangers secured the runway, the four C-130s landed and unloaded. The two AH-60s set off for the capital city of St. George to attack Fort Rupert, which is the Grenadian military headquarters. The Little Birds found air defenses around the capital to be too strong and they returned to the airport within 10 minutes. The rangers and the Delta Force had planned an MH-60 assault, but they also returned to the airport when they found air defense to be too strong. Even though they weren't able to do their design mission, they were able to do other tasks like carry servicemen from the island on the battlefield to Navy ships where they could be treated. They also performed a rescue mission to a Black Hawk that had crashed on the island. By 1983, the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment and its helicopters were heavily committed to supporting the Contras, a United States subsidized military force. Specially adopted unmarked Hughes 500 helicopters from the CIA also took part in this task. The MH-60s were based in Honduras and flew missions into Nicaragua. The unit members wore civilian clothes, flew by night, and were instructed to destroy their aircraft if they were forced down. On the 24th of July, 1987, a Kuwaiti oil tanker that was being escorted by US Navy warships struck a mine in the Persian Gulf. It became apparent that more than escort ships would be required to guard merchant ships. The US military deployed the MH-60 and the AH-60 aircraft from the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment to provide surveillance and 
patrols in cooperation with other U.S. Special Operations units. Two MH6s and four AH-6 aircraft were initially deployed and designated as a detachment of the 160th Aviation Group. The MH-6 aircraft carried forward-looking infrared cameras, or FLIRs, and a videotape system which gave them excellent ability to detect and identify targets. The AH-60s were armed with 762 miniguns and rockets. Initially, the aircraft patrolled in teams. The call sign of the team was CBAT, and they waited for the US Navy to direct them to targets. Later, to preserve the aircraft and crews from fatigue and wear, the CBAT teams remained on the ship's deck until a contact was identified. At 10 p.m. on September 1987, the captain of USS Jarrett launched a CBAT team, an MH-60 and two AH-60s, to check out reports of Iranian mine laying. The team found an amphibious landing ship equipped with mine laying rack. The MH-60 confirmed that it was laying mines and the AH-60s opened fire, causing the crew to abandon the ship. The vessel was subsequently boarded and captured. And this is the final story I'll share with you, but this story really makes me think of the little bird. This is like the perfect little bird story. The little birds were part of the initial assault near the Olympic Hotel in Mogadishu, Somalia. The MH-60s conducted rooftop insertions of Delta Force soldiers. After the shootdown of the MH-60L, call sign Super 61, by a rocket-powered grenade or an RPG, the MH-60 Littlebird, call sign Star 41, landed on the street next to the downed MH-60 and attempted to evacuate the casualties. The pilot left the aircraft and went to assist survivors successfully pulling two soldiers into the Little Bird while the co-pilot laid down suppressive fire from the cockpit with his individual weapons. Under intense ground fire, the MH-60 departed with its crew and survivors. I mean, that's so cool, just going and landing on a helicopter. The pilot gets out, starts going to help people. The co-pilot is just shooting people in, in this little helicopter. Then they can get out of there real quick pretty awesome. I titled this video The Insane History of the MH6 Little Bird and hopefully now you agree that its history is pretty crazy. And the civilian version, the MD500 is a helicopter that I want to fly and I look forward to flying it at some point in my career. But if you found this story as insane as I did, please go ahead and tap that like button. These videos take a lot of time to make and I would really appreciate it if you could show me that you enjoy this video. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this helicopter. Helicopter. For a lot of people, this is their favorite helicopter in the world, and I can totally understand why. If you guys like this video, go ahead and subscribe as well, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.